Hello everyone and welcome to our 360 degree technology in construction webinar brought to you by Theta360.guide. I'm Jesse Kasman, today's moderator. Theta360.guide is an independent and free informational site for developers and power users working with the Ricoh Theta 360 degree camera. I have just a few housekeeping items before I introduce today's panel speakers. The webinar will have an interactive Q&A section at the end. Just type in a question into the question window at any point during the panel discussion and click the submit button. We'll try to answer as many of your questions as time will allow. Also, we have some great giveaways for uh, those of you that stay on uh, through the end of the webinar. Uh, we're uh, the Theta360.guide is giving away a Ricoh Theta S. Uh, that's the real workhorse of the model line, as you know. Uh, we've got Struction Site uh, giving away a single user license for a year. Uh, that's really significant. <clears throat> and we've got Hollow Builder uh, giving away a, a full license, uh, a free license for a full construction project. And they're jumping in and saying that they're doing a Ricoh Theta V as well. So uh, today you're, you're going to have these panelists. You've also got these chances to really get a hold of the products and try them out yourself. So you're going to get good information and real access to the, the products and services. Okay, so we've got uh, three expert panelists today. I'm going to do a very quick intro for each, but as we jump into the first questions, I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves because I, I think that'll add some good details and um, specifics around uh, what they're working on. I especially want to hear a little bit about uh, personal background and how you know the path of getting involved in uh, 360 degree tech uh, in construction because I, I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, each of our panelists are you know really living it day to day. They've built these companies. They're really um, rolled up their sleeves. So I think that kind of journey how they got here is interesting. So the three panelists, uh, Mostafa Akbari is a CEO of Hollow Builder. Hollow Builder provides easy 360 degree documentation of work sites and enables workers to annotate key findings, collaborate virtually, and track the progress of a project over time. Hollow Builder won the 2015 Rico Theta Developers Contest Grand Prize and has since been recognized as one of the top 20 hashtag augmented reality influencer brands. Matt Daly is CEO of Struction Site. Struction Site helps builders virtually document work sites, significantly reducing labor and travel costs. Its founders spent years getting to know the building community from within and focus on solving problems with insiders understanding. And Scott Anderson is Director of Sales at Cupix. Cupix offers smart and easy 3D virtual tours of construction sites, real estate properties, and more. Cupix is now in beta and under rapid development to transform how diverse industries do business. Okay, so those are the, the uh, basic bios and, and information, but like I said, I'm gonna ask a first question. Uh, I'll ask the same question to each person. And um, as you do it, by all means, please take uh, several minutes to um, talk about your company and your, your product. Uh, and, and like I said, your personal background. So the first question, um, uh, kind of high level, but uh, on-site cameras have been in use in the construction industry for years. You know, multiple specialist companies providing uh, high resolution cameras, software, data connections, live streaming, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, Scott, I'll aim this at you. How is 360 degree tech different? And like I said, please tell me a little bit about Cupix and, and also your background on how you got here. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, uh, starting with our background, uh, Cupix is a company that was founded in 2015. Uh, we're a venture-based company, and we recently uh, left stealth mode um, in April of this year. And a little bit about our, our company heritage and background is that we are true 3D veterans. So we've been working in the 3D industry for um, dozens, uh, sometimes multiple decades um, of time that, uh, developing software, working with uh, 3D scanning in particular, and um, also web-based technologies for a, a long time. So we're really pioneers in 
commercializing uh, 3D scanning technology through software. And uh, I personally have been involved with um, a lot of the companies that uh, our, our, our team has put together. Uh, RapidForm uh, was a company that was acquired by 3D Systems, and Team Platform was a web-based system, web-based software that was acquired by 3D Systems. Uh, so we have deep roots in uh, 3D data, computer vision, uh, web applications, and uh, are, are just generally um, experts in, in modeling and industries including AC and construction, but also uh, industries uh, as diverse as aerospace, uh, mining, uh, heavy industries as well. Um, so I, I came into Cupix uh, by virtue of uh, being uh, tied to these companies uh, over over the years. And uh, what we're we're doing with Cupix um, uh, is we're building a software that leverages uh, 360 data, 360 cameras to create 3D models from the 360, <coughs> the 360 photos. So um, basically what we identified was a uh, uh, decreasing cost of 360 uh, cameras like the Ricoh Theta and the Ricoh, Ricoh um, S and the cameras that preceded it and realized that we could really take these cameras and leverage them in indus industry in a way um, that was uh, really uh, transformative. So um, we are transforming the Ricoh uh, camera data and videos uh, and video uh, information into 3D models and 3D data that can be used in professional industries. And w one of the things that's, that's really different about 360 cameras is that we're capturing a, a full 360 view of, uh, of, uh, of the space that you're um, in. And, <clears throat> and uh, with, with basic photography, um, you've got a single small focal point, but with 360 data, you've got a really large um, uh, viewpoint. And some of the technology that we'll be um, talking about in this uh, this seminar and this webinar is the 3D uh, technology that is leveraged from photogrammetry. So by uh, virtue of the large 360 uh, focal point um, with the Ricoh Theta cameras, we can get some really uh, intuitive and spatially uh, defined 3D geometry, and that, that's one of the big differences that we leverage in uh, the Cubix, Cubix software. Okay, that's awesome. There's a whole bunch in there. I'm going to come back around and and uh, um, ask some more about that, but to continue forward um, with the intros and uh, the first question, uh, Matt, I uh, would love to hear a little bit about your, your background and your company and, uh, and how you see 360 tech being different. Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Appreciate it. Um, so as, as you said, my name is Matt, CEO of Structure Insight. We are a, uh, a software company that focuses on uh, the construction industry and allowing builders to uh, rapidly digitize their job sites using, obviously, in this case, a 360 camera, uh, but also just the cameras that are already built into their mobile devices, so not just limited to 360. Um, and, and connecting that information back to common project management systems like Procore BIM 360 with uh, the idea being that uh, you have a source of truth for what's going on in the field and you're enabling you know, collaboration and communication in the context of the job site, kind of like you've never been able to do. So that's, that's, that's what 360 has enabled, I think, for this industry. Um, a little bit of background about our company. Um, I actually met uh, our, uh, my co-founder, Philip uh, Lorenzo, here in Oakland back in 2011. Uh, he was working as a uh, project engineer for McCarthy Builders building uh, the Kaiser Oakland Hospital project. It's about a billion dollar project here in the East Bay. Um, I at the time was working for a company called Faro Technologies, so a 3D laser scanning company, and was really help, uh, responsible for helping McCarthy implement some of these sort of new and groundbreaking 3D laser scanning workflows on that project. So analyzing floor flatness, uh, steel deflection. Um, so Philip and I sort of became friends over that period of time. Uh, and really, it was it was the Rico Theta that sort of a, a, you know a, three, a great affordable 360 camera with an API that sort of inspired us to to start a company and and launch this product. So uh, thank you guys for doing that. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool to hear. Okay, Mo, um, how is uh, 360 degree tech different? And uh, tell us about Hollow Builder, please. Hi, Jesse. Happy. Hey there, Mo being here uh, on your podcast. I'm really enjoying your work for now a long time. Um, as I just mentioned before, um, we won back then in 2015 the Rico Innovation uh, Prize. And back in 2015, there was nothing else out there in a 360 
image space on a web besides uh, Google Street View and Holobuilder. Therefore, we became the official launch partners of the Repo Theta S in October 2015, and that helped us um, to, yeah, be like a grow crazy back then in 2015 up to a million users um, all around the world and we saw yeah a lot of different use cases at the beginning um, where people start crushing it on using the theta s and using the web to share it and we saw like different use cases and the greatest use case um, was construction for us me coming back from a family of uh, construction people. My mom is an architect. My aunt was one of the first female architects. And yeah, getting into that space uh, was awesome for me to see, OK, now I can take what I learned as a computer scientist and as a geek, how I can transform it to the construction AC industry. So that helped us a lot, uh, moving and focusing on one industry and leveraging um, 360 imagery for that. So what we do is basically Holobuilder supports superintendents and project managers to make informed decisions every day. So that's very important to help the guys on the field with tools that they can use every day. And as we will hear through the whole um, hour, I think, that there are different stakeholders who are leveraging Holobuilder on a day-to-day -day basis. On the technology side, um, Holobuilder is a full collaboration suite for mobile and AR VR for construction. Our Jobwork app is the one application for capturing reality very quickly and easy on a job site. So people all around the world are using the Jobwork app to go and capture. And we offer it at the moment as a solution just in English, but all around the world, like we just closed deals in Vietnam where people are using and leveraging the Jobwork app to go and capture. And then Holowilder brings is the platform where you can then dig deeper into your data online and offline and use everything. You can really leverage collaboration. So you, if you are two people on it, you go online, you see like Google Docs, somebody else is logged in, you can then really work together in different time zones. And also we have this thing like what we call like split screen, where you can then bring also like your Revit model, 3D models into Holobuilder, and then it's like BIM to the field. And then use on Holobuilder to compare uh, different time zones which you have captured during the uh, progress of your construction site, compare it with also your 3D models. I think we will hear more about this also during the call. And therefore, 360 was really a game changer for capturing reality and seeing everything, not just uh, like with normal picture, what you use on your right or your left, you have now everything, ceiling, floor, everything on one picture, and it's quick. Now you go around, capture it, and we give the guys on the field a process how to do it and organize all the data. All right, awesome. Um, okay, so those are some pretty damn impressive introductions. Uh, I'm going to dig in with some questions and see where we go. Uh, Matt, you caught my attention um, um, starting the company in Oakland. It sounded like you had lots of good things going beforehand, but you made the leap. You know, um, I kind of, as a layman, not understanding the construction industry deeply, it seems like it would there's lots of regulations, there's safety concerns, things like that. I wouldn't really think uh, construction being uh, open to all sorts of um, kind of crazy new ideas. Uh, why has 360 Tech done well in construction? Yeah, I think uh, I think the primary, I mean, one, yes, there are definitely lots of uh, regulations and safety concerns. I think there's a surprising few amount of regulations around photo documentation and just the process of digitizing things so that that process in and of itself is is uh, is relatively open um, and I think I think you are seeing that construction as an industry is in the middle you know it's in the middle of this massive digital revolution right where this is historically the least digitized industry uh, uh, outside of only I think hunting 
um, in the you know in the world, and wow. and it's it's uh, this uh, this is the three six six technology is is enabling digitization of the one thing that hasn't been able to be digitized until now, which is the physical job site. Um, so I think I think you are going to see more companies adopt this type of technology and jump in here, not just because they need to implement some technology on their job site. The companies that are leading in this space are recognizing this as as a core part of their strategy going forward. So. Uh, I think the a trend of construction companies becoming technology companies is is going to uh, continue and probably only accelerate. I guess that sort of makes sense. You see that happening in lots of other industries, I, along with thinking of construction as kind of being regulated and all sorts of things. Uh, the job site also seems like a a tough place for uh, technology, just dust and dirt and things like that. Is uh, do you ever run into any of those kind of issues? No, no. I mean, you know, there. Uh, I agree with you, right? There's, there's, there's particulate matter. There's dust. There's dirt. There's all sorts of uns unsavory things on a job site that typically don't play well with uh, specifically electronics. Um, but at least I can certainly say, for for your camera's sake, there's there. We haven't really run into an issue with that. If you can manage to keep your lens clean and not uh, not drop it and step on it, um, then then uh, the the technology that that you guys have created from the three you know that that Rico has created from a three six three sixty perspective uh, has really done a great job of sort of standing up to all that. So um, I'm sure there's other tech that has a harder time, but uh, so so far we haven't seen that to be a big issue. That's cool, uh, Mo. I wanted to ask you, um, you know, I, I'm I'm a little bit aware of the Hollow Builder uh, history, where I think. Um, you looked at uh, several different industries that could use this kind of, um, you know, photo recording, this use of 360 degree tech, and, and you settled on construction. What, what was it about construction that um, really made you move in that direction? Uh, I just met, uh, said construction um, had a lot of issues uh, as they needed to develop being more uh, profitable and have less. Um, need more productivity and we saw that we can help yeah that was a great place where people came to us and wanted to use Holo Builder and it was nothing else there for capturing and then we had a platform which was that damn easy to use for the guys and girls so there's no learning curve and we said okay why not we partner with a lot of people in the construction especially here in the Bay Area and work with them together to give them a great solution for make them you know, every day better and productive and that's working pretty well and then very important is I think in construction as you just mentioned that every tool what you bring out there has to be simple and mm -hmm. should not bring any change management with it mm -hmm. you know if you're doing a laser scan you need heavy uh, equipment yeah or if it's needed to do like yes other backpacks or other tools around which you need to somebody send him two days to learn uh, how to use this device mm -hmm. or if it's something needed to go around and capture like 20 different images in one room then it's not usable in construction yeah so you need to think about the processes from inside and then make it simple that it's implementable and that was where we saw okay we can bring our knowledge as a team who's from construction, from IT, from process management, from automobile, and that implement those learnings into construction. And especially as now also lean is getting into construction, lean management, and we are coming out like of automotive, where lean uh, production was already big, we could now implement those workflows for construction now. Okay, got it. Um... Scott, I'm hearing um, everyone talking about the 360 quite a bit. I, I'm sort of interested. Um, can you tell me a little bit? Uh, yours is a 3D solution. Is that an important distinction? And can you tell me a little bit about what the difference that you see of 360 and 3D? Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, we live in in 3D, and the construction site is a is a 3D site. So there are. Uh, sizes and shapes and uh, definition of everything beyond a, a simple photo. Um, so the 360 uh, photo data is uh, great and immersive for capturing everything 
around you. But what we're doing with the uh, data is taking it into actual 3D. Uh, so rather than a uh, uh, individual photos that you're looking at, uh, we're actually building a full uh, 3D uh, geometry. And that's important for uh, a lot of reasons on a construction site, uh, being able to uh, take measurements, uh, being able to uh, uh, accurately locate camera positions um, so that you know um, where a camera uh, position is, is located in a very precise uh, sort of way. Um, this helps with uh, construction management, uh, coordination, uh, coordination with a BIM, uh, BIM model. Um, so as construction companies get more, more involved in uh, 3D and 3D data uh, tools like um, uh, quick, rapid documentation with cameras are, are fantastic, um, but being able to take a true 3D virtual tour um, with a true 3D uh, location of camera, uh, true 3D measurements, and a true 3D positioning of an entire geometry uh, becomes important. That's uh, something that Cupix allows uh, anybody with uh, uh, 360 data collection uh, to do. So um, you get a lot of uh, uh, connection with the design and construction tied to 3D. Um, so the fact that we're working in 3D becomes very relevant to, uh, to our users because we are, we are truly working in 3D and working with 3D data. Um, Scott, do you sell sort of based on that it's like this cutting edge technology or do you sell based on that it's less expensive for making those kind of measurements on site? Uh, what, what's sort of your main um, selling point? Well, a lot of companies and, and users have an impression that a laser scanner like a Faro or a HDS or even a Matterport uh, system is what is needed to collect uh, 3D measurements and 3D data. Um, so a lot of our, our users' jaws uh, literally drop when they, they realize that with a Theta S for $200 or a Theta V for you know, $400 that they can uh, create 3D point clouds and 3D meshes um, from, uh, from camera, uh, camera data. So walking a job site in 10 or 15 minutes, uh, collecting photos and getting the data processed on our servers, creating the, the 3D models that can be used in um, our software or in other applications like uh, Revit or Recap um, or VR, AR is uh, jaw-dropping for them. Um, so there, there's some allure to this um, amazing capability that Cupix uh, has, but it's very pragmatic. Uh, being able to take measurements and use the 3D data in 3D applications on a 3D uh, job site um, is uh, ties to the core value of what Cupix is providing. Matt, I'm sort of interested in asking the same question for you. Uh, what is the strongest selling point for Struction Site, and is it is it that it's uh, part of the digitizing that's happening? Is it, or is it sort of more saves money, saves time? Matt, I don't think I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Got it. So the, the, the I would say for us, the, the two main selling points are, I guess there's, there's actually a ton of them. And it's, it's sort of all of the above to your answer, but speed, uh, simplicity, and, and, and reliability. Uh, those three things I think are really key. Um, so it's, it's got to be really fast. It's got to be really simple. And it just has to work every time. And, and you expect it to. Um, the, the people in this industry are very busy. They don't have time for stuff that that doesn't work the first time or that is confusing. Um, so we really focus on those three things. Yeah, you, I think you were kind of getting at what I was talking about. It's, it's sort of interesting. You, those sound like, you know, really clear, concrete selling points. It's not that it, you have the coolest setup. It's that you're going to, you know, really save them some time and money. You're going to really uh, make a difference in their workflow. Yeah, I mean, there's there is a clear ROI that you can draw between yeah. you know, the way things have been done in terms of documenting job sites previously and the way that it can be done, combining a 360 camera with a piece of software that allows you to either uh, manually or automatically localize and find yourself on a drawing so that that information finds itself in the right spot. Yeah. Uh, Mo, what about, um, there's lots of technologies already out there. There's sort of this big ecosystem of products and technologies. So do you integrate with things like uh, uh, Bluebeam 
um, you know, Autodesk, Revit, those those sorts of things. What what kind of connections do you have out uh, already existing? Um, just give me a second on on a measurements. Uh, I like the idea, and yeah, we were the first ones uh, bringing like measurements into 360 images, mm -hmm. and that's I think the uh, one of the awesome features uh, to have that you can do the measurements in. Uh, Holobit, it's not like a laser scan. Laser scan is always crazy precise. And everything else, if you take even any other device, we get up to 99% accuracy. And that's, I think, really something which nowadays you can leverage to algorithms. Yeah, because also the laser scans is more like a physical uh, way how you capture and process. And now through algorithms and computer vision, we are that able to do that measurements as nearly great um, as laser scans. I think that's as uh, Scott just said, that's a great value to have in a product doing um, measurements. And yes, uh, integration, I think it's very important for the whole industry that you can create your data, have this one place where you can store a lot of your data, not just uh, 360 images, you can also know bring your own other pictures into it, you can bring documents into it, you can bring 3D models into it, you can bring cube maps into it, I don't know, there's a lot of things, you can like bring maps and drawings into it, and then you can share it with different types of uh, other products. We just recently launched our BIM360 uh, integration, which is really the deep integration, and the only one uh, working with the next gen um, BIM360 field, so that you can really log in into Holobit with your Autodesk account. So that is, makes it very easy again, that you have that one click solution going into Holobit. You can use it as an Autodesk user. And then if you can create an issue, drag and drop an issue into Holobit, it then directly syncs back into um, BIM360 field. Somebody else on a job site opens the form and sees the issue, can click on it sees the context of the issue, and I can react into it and see it in Holobit. And the same goes back and forth with BIM360 Docs, for example. So then you have then we can get the sheets which you can bring into Holobit and then resync them both ways. And then even if you go down into BIM360 Docs, you can see like mini Holobit icons where you can then click on them and then it opens a view to Holobit. Another thing what we are doing is to build our whole platform to open it also for um, other people. It's not that we want just integrate, that people just connect back and forth the data, but we are giving other people soon the ability to run their algorithms on Holovida. So we have the capability already that you know, we run our own uh, AI in the background on the images, but also there's like other companies who are great at using computer vision on specific construction issues, like for safety. And then we are open that people can run those algorithms on our data set to you know, leverage that data, because we will not do everything. We are just very much focused on uh, process optimization. As you just mentioned before, safety is a great issue in the industry. Other friends are working on safety like the friends from uh, SafeSide. So we will open our platform to those who are working on those issues to that everybody can use the data more and more on different platforms. And also we are open uh, for different things. So you can like just Metaport scanners and then import those data as a 3D model OBJ to hold over there. So you can have like, as we have like this time history of your project, you can import those to hold over there and see even a 3D, full 3D model in Holobuilder and then as one time point as you do like a Metaport scan in between. Okay, awesome. Um, uh, just take a quick break and remind everyone uh, we're taking questions. I see we've got some filtering in. Um, uh, just use the question window there in on your screen and type in your questions at any time. Okay, so maybe on the other side, uh, Scott, I was thinking, um, What's the, the toughest part for customers to understand? What's um, the, you come up with this uh, cool uh, 3D uh, measurement and mapping, you build these virtual tours. Uh, do they have trouble 
uh, understanding what you're selling? Uh, there, uh, so our, our software is creating these virtual tours and, and 3D, 3D uh, data, but we uh, don't want to miss the fact that we are doing plain documentation. So okay. if you want to just work with photos and just work with uh, images, um, it's completely possible to do that. Uh, working with uh, camera, phone images as well uh, is, is no, uh, no problem in an upcoming release. So being able to uh, pinpoint uh, mobile phone data um, is uh, well within the capability and competency of what uh, Cupix will, uh, is offering and will offer. Um, but uh, specific to your question, the, one of the main challenges that we find with 360 users is the, um, uh, the technique of taking uh, the photos and a lack of realization that you're collecting everything that's near the camera. So if you uh, put the photo in front of your face, everybody in the call and a lot of the uh, people on on uh, in the audience know that you're going to get a selfie of yourself. And when you're uh, taking multiple photos and you realize that if you hold the camera above your head or you place the camera on a tripod or um, if you start to distance yourself from the camera, um, then your body and your, your head, your face, uh, the uh, interference with the photo becomes smaller and smaller. So that's one of the challenges uh, that, that we have, um, which is easily remedied. remedied. Uh, you can put the camera on top of uh, a hard hat. We've seen that We've implemented that frequently, or hold a stick, a small selfie stick, hold the camera above your head. Um, so in Cupix's uh, situation, we just simply need, we simply ask that the users get uh, some uh, semi-dense to as dense as they want uh, photos of a job site. So snapping a couple of photos uh, here and there with a the camera above your head is about all that we need. Um, so it's pretty easy to remedy. Uh, uh, the training, we have some videos and documentation on that. But what we find is anybody that's used uh, survey equipment or uh, 3D scanners like a, a Faro, like a Matterport, um, again, I have no problem with uh, with uh, using the software. And um, it's, it's really a small small learning uh, learning curve, especially with uh, uh, Ricoh Theta. Awesome. Matt, uh, how about you? Uh, I'm sort of interested, um, you know, what's the biggest challenge for you guys in the market? I think uh, I think I think both of these guys would probably agree that there's not um, this isn't a really tough sell. It's not it's not it's not hard to convince people that this is a faster and easier way to to capture their job sites and use that as a communication tool. I think I think one barrier we do run into is there are some expectations around uh, photo resolution. So um, you know people get really excited about the immersive nature of 360 capture, but there's uh, with it, not just re, you know regarding Rico, all the 360 cameras we work with are naturally lower resolution than you know even just getting out your your phone and taking a picture. So so uh, as as much as we love the immersive nature, there are still some limitations to the amount of clarity that we can get and you know uh, equipment, equipment labels you can read and things like that. Um, so that that's something that prevents uh, some people from going all in on this right away. And uh, and I think it's just a matter of time for the hardware to just continue to get better and better and you know, higher resolution cameras to continue to go down in price. Um, but but I, it's, it's the, I, I think that's for us one of the biggest barriers we run into. I understood. Hey, Mo, how about you? Uh, I know you guys, um, you have some real big uh, numbers, some real su uh, successes in the market, but what challenges do you see um, in front of you? Um, I think one of the challenges, um, okay, the resolution sometimes plays a role. Um, was that people now generate a lot of data. So people are capturing a lot of images. They yeah. go sometimes now twice a day around capture. They're doing it for different reasons. So they go around and capture for an inspection. And then there's a demolition on a job site going on. And if you have like an airport as a customer or large hospitals like we do, so then they capture so many images. So the question was, okay, now we built in like this time travel so they can now organize through space and time, but that was not, that's not enough. So the issue is, okay, how manage that data? So we came up with two things. One is the first step is, so we are delivering now categorization to everybody. So people can categorize during capturing what they are taking as an image. So they can say, oh yeah, that's an inspection. And then can later go on and filter those easily. So everybody can find and tag like each image very simply. So that was a challenge which we now solve 
And the next thing is that as we are building with our machine learning in the background, I'm pushing that forward that we can automate uh, a lot of those processes for the girls and guys on the field so they don't have to search manually themselves each image and they can just talk to the software and get the right data. I think simplifying, as both Scott and Matt said, that's always important for uh, construction. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, um, I kind of want to do a little bit forward looking. Um, so we've, we've heard a little bit about job site um, conditions, uh, the kind of things that you, um, you guys have been working with, but um, I'm interested in, I picked this randomly, but two years, where will you be in two years? Um, you know, are you going to be doing uh, more things, uh, uh, sort of like some sort of live streaming, those kind of uh, cool technical details? I, I'd be interested in hearing about that. Maybe, uh, Matt, um, where do you where do you see Struction Site in, in, in two years? Yeah, I think I think a, a general way of looking at that, you know, regarding live streaming specifically, I think the answer is yes. You know, you have job, you have technologies like uh, Dewalt's Job Site Wi-Fi. That's coming out, which which does enable a lot of different workflows that just were not possible before. Um, but I, I think I think one thing you're going to see from all three of these companies on this webinar, and Mo's touched on this a few times already, is you have you have people that are sitting on uh, quite a bit of data, a lot of visual job site data combined with other types of metadata, like Mo mentioned tags, um, which we also do, which which creates a, a very a perfect storm, if you will, for doing machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, being able to start using this information and, and helping people predict things, uh, understanding things about their project they just could have never figured out before, um, all just based on them digitizing the job site and adding some information to what they're doing. Um, I think I think that's going to be a pretty a pretty common trend among anybody in this industry that is dealing with photo or video data that some level is going to get into that type of stuff. Um, and uh, and I'd, I'd say that's that's where we will be focusing a great deal of our efforts as well. Yeah, it seems like it's a hot topic in a lot of areas, big data and then machine learning, uh, technologies like TensorFlow and stuff like that. So much data you need to try and sift through it and, and learn from it. Uh, okay, that's, that's really fascinating. Um, Scott, how about you? Um, you guys, uh, are already kind of pushing the envelope. Where do you think you'll be in two years? That's a that's a great great question. And the rate of uh, the rate of change of our product and and the capability of, or just that the throughput of our, our development team is is hard to keep up with. Even as an employee of the company, um, we've uh, I believe we'll continue to stick to a lot of the core competencies that we have and uh, build those around our our construction uh, related. Uh, accounts and uh, enterprise uh, development. Uh, so, uh, having the automated uh, creation of uh, automation, automated location of 360 photos, I think will continue just to make that stronger and stronger. Um, working with bigger and larger uh, uh, tours, uh, size tours, larger square footage, uh, more photos are is, is already. Uh, area where we've taken great leaps on um, in the last couple of months, so I think we'll continue um, working there. I'm um, just working with massive spaces and um, things and innovations with 4D tours and doing uh, comparisons over time. Um, something we just announced is again one of the core competencies that we'll uh, continue to build on. Um, so I think we're going to get that that feedback from our our customer base um, and uh, from and continue to get that from our users. That's really what's been guiding us uh, guiding us to this this point. Um, so, you know, better 3D tours, better 4D tours, better virtual tours, um, working with video video data uh, rather than individual photos uh, to create tours, um, and um, uh, really, really sticking to a lot of the core competencies that we have uh, tailored to the AEC and construction industry. Yeah, that's awesome. Mo, uh, where's Hollow Builder going to be in two years? Um, that's, we have a clear vision. I think we don't build technology because uh, you can build technology or it's just hard uh, to have deep learning or machine learning. I think it's important to focus on values and benefits for your customers. As mentioned, uh, I want it always now. My cousin still works for the city of San Jose as an engineer and her husband also. So I want to make their lives better. And for me is that we can leverage 
guidance and assistance systems in two years for superintendents, project managers, and owners so that they can easily access a job site and they have somebody like a, we have now navigation systems who help you drive your car. One day something's partly will be automated that we can help them to connect what they have like as a BIM model, which is like a, a lot of the scheduling happening there, the three D models, the cars, and combine it with any action they are doing every day. So they can again make informed decisions. They can see very quickly on a job site what is the effects of my tasks, what I'm doing, or what is open, and then coordinate each of the other subcontractors, co-workers, uh, much better. I think that value, helping people to being better every day, that's important, and not the technology or focusing on tech. That's really cool. Okay, so with those uh, forward-looking statements, I, I find those really cool to hear um, you guys where you expect to be going. Um, we actually have more questions than I was expecting, so I think we're going to jump into the Q&A section. We'll, uh, people have been uh, uh, typing in their questions. I'd like to get to some of them. Um, uh, and just to remind you also, we're going to be um, uh, talking about the giveaways as well at the very end. So um, let me dig through these questions. Uh, the first one, uh, very specific, this is from Logan. Um, Mo, you mentioned um, uh, lean techniques being used in construction. This is a question, what kinds of projects are using lean for construction? Uh, we have like hospital projects. A lot of larger projects now have like this integrated projects and lean projects. So they are going to implement more workloads so they it's like not coming from production, you have like just in time production, and that you can really go and doing your construction, then also have this look ahead, work together, everybody is responsible, the quality um, aspect of what you're building can increase with lean. And it starts with big projects because they have the most need um, to improve, and every little bit of margin you can make on such a project is a, a big win for you as a builder. So that's very important. And with the tools we're delivering, people can make this just-in-time decisions because they see you know, how what is going on on a job site. They can directly make a decision. Even if you have like eight people updating your pay model every day in, in the trailers next doors, yeah, those people can see what is happening on a job site, they don't have to put the gears on, run over, and look at something, come back, then sit again. So they have access to actual data all day long. And I think that's making these decisions, it's important. Also see what was delivered. Do we have it on site? Is it on the right space? And you know, sitting, the superintendents love to sit at home or you know, getting there, first having dinner with the kids and wife, and then open the laptop and going through the day and saying, okay, what happened? What is tomorrow happening? So they can make all these quick decisions. What we already use in software development and manufacturing. I hope that answers the, uh, Logan's question. Okay, I'll see he can uh, put in more information if he wants. Um, okay, so here's one about the theta I, I, from uh, Chris. Uh, actually, I'll ask this maybe to all of you. Um, We'll start with you, Matt. Uh, is the only reason you are using the Theta the SDK? The S's resolution and poor image quality uh, have been surpassed by many vendors. The Theta V sticks to the same photos resolution. Yeah, I think um, I think for us as a as a software provider, as a third party software provider, the quality and documentation and how easy it is to work with a hardware vendor does matter a lot. Um, and we have worked with some other hardware vendors who have, you know, not been as easy to work with. I'm not wanting to disparage anyone else, but uh, we, we are about working with people that make it easy uh, to do in our, in our, you know, sort of collaborative and, and, and have great documentation. So I, I would say that was one of the main reasons was they did that. I mean, we do work with a number of other uh, 360 cameras. We're, we're certainly not tied to the Ricoh specifically, but, um, but 
but they were the they were really one of the first ones and still are one of the best uh, partners you can look for from our perspective. Um, and uh, and yeah, I would I would say that was a key role. Uh, Scott, how about uh, at Cupix? Um, are you using Theta uh, because of the SDK, or are there other reasons? Uh, we like it because of the uh, camera optical qualities. We like it because of the ease of use. Uh, we like the speed of the Rico. I've got four or five Ricos, um, Rico Thetas, different versions behind me. Um, they're robust, they're versatile. Um, uh, we, we're not specifically tying to the SDK. Uh, however, we can work with any uh, camera. I've got a uh, half dozen other cameras sitting behind me as well. Um, but uh, we, we like it for a lot of the uh, internal hardware and uh, optical properties and um, just the overall ease of use, being able to take photos, um, get those onto the cloud uh, really easily, uh, either through the Theta app or just uh, plugging into the computer. The photos are all stitched. Um, the quality is um, quality's not, not the top notch in terms of resolution, but the uh, uh, distortion of the image is very low. Um, the, the noise is very low. Um, and we, we like the, we like the Ricoh Theta um, all around. Um, Mo, how about uh, Hollow Builder? I know you guys uh, actively are promoting the V. You seem pretty enthusiastic about it. Um, you know, why are you why are you so enthusiastic about the theta? Uh, there are two reasons. <laughs> okay, one is uh, as mentioned back then, going back to 2015, um, we built a great relationship with Rico. When I was back in Japan, meeting with the CEO of Rico and the top management, who just came out with a V uh, with the cameras with the thetas, and we had a lot of discussion. Okay, where is the future going for 360 in the whole web and which industry, so we have a tight relationship uh, to those people who were the innovators and brought this out as first people on the market and we brought the first software out for uh, this, so that's bound us uh, together. But besides that, the we does a great job of um, capturing very quickly, so you reduce the time from even five, uh, eight to nine seconds to three, four seconds now of capturing one image and as speed is one uh, momentum for us that's the great thing to work with uh, together with the Wii. So we have our job work app which connects directly to the camera and then people can go around and capture with the app and the camera so that integration is awesome and as they are going further support uh, um, open API for 360 which was back then created by Google and a lot of the camera uh, manufacturers are supporting it, that's great. Having standards in the industry which supports hardware and we can build on those uh, standards our applications and we know they work with each other camera. But therefore I think the Rico does the job of having speed. If I need something high resolution, great thing, I go to laser scanning, but everything else as also Matt said, speed, 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 reliability, that it works always, it is charged for a long time, that's important, and that's what we give us. To be on a job site, it's handy, and yeah, works great. Uh, Mo, there's a similar question here from Marcus. Uh, I, similar, I, I, think, I think it's sort of related. Uh, couldn't I just use a smartphone and build panoramas and up, uh, upload them to your service? Yes, you could. That's an awesome way to do it. Just take the camera, uh, especially I think there's a good uh, Google Android phone support making those. But again, that's a trade-off in uh, having speed. Yeah, so you can upload it. So if you had just one, if you're doing like a thousand spots, you don't want to turn around a thousand times to capture <laughs> it. And it takes you, no, it's a, it's a ROI no? calculation yeah. very easily. So if you yeah. do it, uh, a thousand spots on a hospital project which has 10,000 rooms yeah so you don't want to do it at 10,000 times take that time you can spend 200 bucks 300 bucks on a camera which saves you that time yeah and has a great quality so that's I think the trade-off is how often do we do it and what is the return of investment got it okay um, here's one from Pat um, uh, Matt, I think this might um, already be part of your service, but um, I 
uh, maybe the, the length of this is a little bit interesting. Are you looking into using this as an asset management, in, in an asset management sense? For example, assessing infrastructure health through machine learning by using photos taken over 10 years in the same locations? I, I can tell you that that's not going to be a specific application that we're going to pursue. I think kind of as I stated earlier, there's there's now a ton of data which enables all sorts of different applications and things with that. And uh, and I think Mo alluded to this as well. I think it's it's what's going to happen is you're going to have people who want to create, who want to use this information to create their own very specific, uh, you know, artificially intelligent use case for solving a very specific problem, you know, narrow AI. And uh, and there there will be probably a need for companies like ours to develop uh, connection points for people to do that on their own. Um, so I, that that's not a problem that you know uh, we specifically are going to aim to solve. Um, but I think it could easily be a problem that someone else could, um, and we'd certainly be interested in having a discussion and, and giving someone access, if needed, to to build some of their own tools on top of, of what we're doing. Um, so that, that I guess that's the easiest way I can answer that. Okay. All right. Understood. Um, I think this is kind of interesting from Jason. Um, do any of the panelists have a background or interest in photography? Do any of you guys? Sounds like I a solid. I love Instagram uh, photography. <laughs> I'm great on that. Uh, being on Instagram, <laughs> snapping pictures, and now using, uh, I have also a Motorola camera 360, which is then built in uh, 360 uh, into the phone directly. Um, we have an attachment to it, and that makes it also easy to capture like everyday images in 360. So I try as much as possible to capture everything uh, in 360 and not uh, plain images. So therefore, I have all these attachments at the Rico. I'm always on it to capture 360 and see okay how you can leverage that data uh, in different sense and how we can you know, work with that data. Uh, we are creating, so um, that's like the artistic part. Also, you can you see great things coming out of 360 images because of the distortion on it. So it's like a new new way of creating art. I don't know if it's photography in a, in a <laughs> classical sense, but it's uh, great and yeah, helps me to relax <laughs> going to yeah on hikes and capturing. Yeah. Got it. Um. Yeah, this is Scott. Scott here. I, I can uh, say that we, our our team at Cupix definitely has a photography uh, side side to it. We've got a employee on staff that's a professional photographer, and um, on our our website, some of the other market the markets that we're tying into are real estate and hospitality, which are inherently um, photography uh, based. So the aesthetics uh, definitely tie in uh, tie in there, um, along with other measurement technology like uh, 3D scanners. Um, and because we're, we're not necessarily tied to the API, uh, we, we do we do a fair amount of testing with other other cameras. Rico is still the one that we recommend, um, but yeah, photography is definitely in our blood, um, along with uh, other aspects we talked about um, up to now. Uh, here's one from Lisa. I think it's kind of related to photographers who want to make sure they own their own photographs. Uh, Scott, I'll. I'll point this at you first too. Um, say I'm a user and I've had an account for a while and I want to cancel. Is there an easy way to download all my information from your service? And then uh, do I own the rights to what I've uploaded? Yeah, right, right. that's a great question. So we uh, approached this in some of our pre previous companies like Team Platform, which is a web-based company. We uploaded proprietary information from CAD drawings to uh, very proprietary marketing information. So the answer is yes, it's uh, totally uh, uh, content that's owned by the user. And what we um, have uh, are also, also offer is an ability to download not just the ind individual photos or the individual photos that are mapped on a floor plan, but actual 3D uh, content. So a full uh, 3D mesh with a 3D point cloud that can be uh, saved for archive and uh, viewed any time uh, down the road. So it's something that you can keep with you. It's great for handoff or closeout on a, on a job site. Um, and it's just a, it's a safe way to safeguard against any um, anything that might come up. So we do offer it's a, an affirmative on both of those questions. 
Uh, Mo, how about Hollow Builder? Um, the yeah, let's keep it short. <laughs> yes, uh, we have like this uh, archiving and handover feature, which is built in already today. People, if their job site project ends, they can click on a button, they download the whole project, and we have the uh, Hollow Builder offline viewer. And then you can, you don't need any subscription, you don't need anything, you can keep it like on a, put it on a stick for the next 10, 20 years, and you have the whole experience which you have on Holo Builder into your um, Holo View app. So you can go around, use the data, do the time travel, everything. And there's no internet connection needed. It's fully offline. You can download it on your Mac or on your Windows PC, use it. You can use it on tablet, everywhere. So that's very simply uh, done. If you want to have your raw images and do it classically, you can do it also. But I think the core thing is that you have that full immersive experience with the data, and then you can take it everywhere you want with you. I think that's a uh, crazy uh, important that you have this exchangeability of your data and without even paying later on as you archive it, and you want to give it even to your owner that he can work with it for the future. He can use it, as mentioned before in the question, for maintenance reasons or anything else that that access is uh, giving to everybody. Great. Uh, Matt, I've got one for you. Um, as you're building out your sales teams and doing different, uh, I imagine, sort of um, sales channels build, building, um, here's one from Mike. He says, what advice can you give for marketing these virtual tours to construction companies and then as a freelancer versus as an agency? Yeah, I like, I like that question a lot, actually, and I uh, I would say, <laughs> uh, I would say your 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 best bet is identifying projects that have a photo documentation specification built into them. Um, and there are uh, many projects, including some very large public and private projects, that have a specific photo documentation spec. Um, there's a company by the name of MultiVista that uh, has. Uh, done a really pretty fantastic job of, of positioning themselves in that market as a service provider in that space, more, more so as an organization. But my advice to you would be uh, to follow them very closely and understand uh, where their customers are because those are potentially your customers too as somebody who is looking to provide this as a service. I think you would just want to be very sure that you've, you ha yourself have picked a software platform that, that has uh, you know all the things that you need as a user but also uh, a very specific deliverable to the owner that is sort of a, a, we'll call it offline and vendor neutral that does not require additional software. In general, uh, I would say if you're looking to understand what building owners want, it's it's owning their data in a format that does not require, um, you know, uh, them to be a part of any sort of subscription or, or anything like that later. Um, but but you know, look at look at MultiVista, look for projects that have photo documentation specs, and uh, I'm sure you'll find some work. Okay, awesome. All right, I, I think we have uh, time for one more question. This is from Dave. I'm going to point it at, at Mo. If uh, Scott or Matt, you want to jump into, you're welcome. Um, Mo, uh, are there any performance issues with your cloud-based services? Uh, where are your da data centers located, and is location an issue? Um, no, so we have uh, all around the world um, data centers. Oh, not we. we, we host on a cloud. So sure. in in uh, in the US we are on uh, Google Cloud and we host also we can run on other clouds. In Europe we have uh, we run on Azure because most of European customers want to have their data stored in a different uh, cloud. And over there, Azure has a certification for being a trusted cloud. So we host then uh, for those customers and. In the U.S., people won't have their data locally, and then in Japan, again, the same. There's a lot of restriction where your data is, so we can provide and host your data on, on that location or country you want. For performance issues, so everything in our case works offline anyways, so you capture everything and you don't need any connection because the repo has the Wi-Fi built in for the beginning, and then later as you go to your trailer, then you upload it online, and then you can access it. So have making this uh, very simple that you can really capture everywhere where there's no cell connection, no connectivity, and then upload it later, and then use it from every you know, place on Earth 
makes it very convenient for our customers. And having the option to choose uh, the data center of your choice uh, where we can host you know, everything, that's great. And even if you are like a very, very highly military uh, contractor, then we can have you to run it on on-premise. So it's not even in a cloud for you. So it's much more secure uh, if you want to run it on, on your own servers. So that's, I think, like a big benefit on a lot of projects. Uh, like yeah, if you are doing oil and gas, they want to have the data on their own servers, and then yeah, we can provide it. Okay, great. All right, well, we're at the top of the hour. So for uh, everyone that's logged in and um, uh, participated in the webinar, thank you. We really appreciate it. We, uh, as I mentioned, there are some fantastic giveaways uh, attached with this. Struction site is giving away a single user license for a year. Uh, that's fantastic. Hollow Builder is a free license for a full construction project and a Rico Theta V. And uh, we, uh, Theta360.guide, are giving away uh, not quite as sexy, but still super sexy, uh, Rico Theta S. Um, so uh, these will be picked, and you will get an email by the end of the day. Um, so uh, please keep an eye on your inbox. Uh, a big thanks to our pan panelists. Uh, Mo, thank you very much. Jesse, thank you for hosting it and bringing those all all together and talking, yeah, about that, such a topic which is yeah, drives innovation and with innovation driving productivity uh, in a construction industry. Thank you for hosting us. Matt, thank you, thank you. Absolutely, same to you. Appreciate you bringing us on here, Jesse. S Scott, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jesse, and thank you, Matt and Mo and the thank other you. panels. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.